Hi guys and welcome back to another Big Al Devlin video here at the House of Devlin and today's video is really going to be a discussion about being young and having to use a walking aid such as a walking stick or a, 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 or a cane to be able to uh, allow you to walk properly. Um, what I'm going to be focusing on is the impact that that can have on your life or the impact that you allow it to have on your life ultimately and so what, what I'll be doing is I'll be dividing the video into a number of different sections to start off with. I'll, I'll introduce how I started to use a walking stick um, and the reasons why. And you can probably see if you, you're in a similar position, something similar with yourself. Unless, of course, you were told you have to use a walking stick. Mine was a choice, but it was a necessary choice. I have to, I have to use a walking stick when I go outside. If not, I put my, my, my own health at risk and so you know that's something i have to accept but I, I didn't have a health professional tell me i have to use a walking stick but of course you may have been in a position where you had a doctor go you need a walking stick and of course you, as a result your beginnings may have been slightly different to mine but then of course once you've got the walking stick obviously there's a few other things that to consider and that is really the impact that you believe it might have on your on your life when you first start using it for example I mean, you might think that people think you're more vulnerable and you might be thinking that people stare at you if you go out in public with it because, well, you don't associate walking sticks with young people. You associate walking sticks typically with old people. And so people will, will, will stare or will look and or at least you think they will um, because simply because you're uh, an abnormality, perhaps, or, or, or rarity, I think is a bit better word abnormality is such a horrible word isn't it i don't know why i use that but you're a rarity you're not as commonplace as an old person having a, a you know a walking stick although one thing i will say is of course having now uh, being you having used a walking stick now for, uh, for about six months something like that i have actually noticed quite a lot of younger people using them so it's actually surprising that there are more out there than you realize and perhaps People don't notice you as much as you perhaps are initially worried about, but I'll talk about that later. But also I'll be looking at like how it might affect your friendships or how you think it might affect your friendships, for example, um, and your sort of just sort of everyday sort of life. And of course, dating, which is going to be a massive thing for some people, the impact it might have on dating. And of course, then at the end, I'll be discussing whether it actually does make you more vulnerable and what you can do about that because um i just say now i am actually started filming uh, a series on self-defense with through the art of bartitsu um i don't know what i'm going to call the playlist yet at the moment or anything like that but it'd be very easy to find it probably called uh, learning the way of bartitsu or something along those lines um and basically that's a martial art that allows you to protect yourself or allows you to use self-defense using your walking stick or your walking cane as an aid to your defense, using it to help to protect yourself. And as a result, allow you to feel safer again um, and less vulnerable than perhaps you might otherwise feel. So the first section really that of this video that I really want to sort of focus on um, is how I started using a walking stick and the reasons why. Um, when I was 28, a couple of years ago, I was in a very, very, very bad uh, road traffic accident on the motorway. I was stationary um, in a line of traffic and got hit from behind by a 35 ton truck going 52 or 54 miles per hour, if I remember correctly. He was going over 50 something miles per hour anyway. And um, as you can imagine, it made a right mess of the car, myself, and unfortunately my girlfriend as well, who was in the passenger seat. Now my girlfriend was put in a wheelchair by, by the accident. Um, and although she's not 100% dependent on the wheelchair, she is outside of the house 100% dependent on the wheelchair. But inside the house, at least she's, you know, after two years is able to get up and around and about um, the house without her wheelchair. You know, she might have a walking aid, you know, to help her do certain things like in the kitchen, for example. She does have like a, a seat 
on on reels to help her out and stuff. So she's in a much worse position than me, and I can't imagine. I don't. I don't know how she, how she she has so much strength because it probably would have broken me. Um, but I came out with a few of a, my own injuries, but mine were all related to the the well, apart from my paralyzed part, partially paralyzed thumb. Um, all my injuries, really long term injuries, that is, um, came from the blow to the back of my head. I had a massive blow to the back of my head and um, it gave me things like amnesia. I, I suffer from amnesia, short term and long term memory loss um, and a few other things. And of course, um, what has caused me to now use a walking stick, a sort of um, sporadic, intermittent loss of balance. For some reason, I just every now and then lose my balance um, basically, the experience, the physical experience of um, me losing my balance is just suddenly the world, the, the world or whatever, the room or whatever will start spinning. It will physically look like it's spinning, like you've had a really bad hangover, like a lot of vodka the night before, that kind of spinning, you know. Um, and you'll lose your proprioception for, 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 for a short period of time. A proprioception is the sense of knowing where your body is without having to look at it. So, for example, if I close my eyes and just move my hand around and I'm going to touch it with my head, there you go, I knew exactly where my hand was without opening my eyes. That's what proprioception is, is knowing exactly where every part of your body is without having to be able to look at it. Without it, we wouldn't be able to walk, we wouldn't be able to do anything, basically, because unless we were watching our feet at the time and all the rest of it, okay? Um, but I tend to, for some reason, I seem to lose that ability. It's like I, I, I don't know where my hands and my feet are. Uh, and it only lasts like a second, two at tops, but I'd say a second to probably at tops. But that second is all it takes for me to fall over. Now, when I'm sat down or when I'm driving or anything like this, I think I've had this attack ultimately quite a few times, but it's never... Um, affected me when I've sat down because of course I don't fall over it doesn't affect my ability to do anything else apart from as I say my balance really it affects my ability to stay on my feet but when I'm walking or standing when it hits I'm almost guaranteed to fall over unless of course there's something nearby that I can grab to stop my fall and even then there's no guarantee because of course as I say I lose this sort of kind of proprioception it's kind of like I become like a stiff board and I just go bang. It's not like I can even put my hands in front of me to deaden the blow to some extent, okay? Because it takes it takes some of your reaction speed away, your reflexes away from you. Um, now, for two years nearly, well, about a year and a half, it was two years ago, the crash just over. And for the last sort of six months, I've been using a walking stick. But for the first year and a half, I resisted using a walking stick. I did not want to use one. In fact, it didn't even become in my head a really a, a reason or an idea you know, I just didn't even think of it really to start off with because every time I fell yeah I winded myself I'd fallen on concrete you know and things like this for Fall, just fallen randomly into walls and stuff like you know but it didn't really bother me too much but about six a little while ago I basically when I fell I badly hurt my ankle and then two weeks later, I did the same thing and then hurt the same ankle again really badly um, just after it sort of started healing. Um, and as a result of it, I was unable to do the sort of things in my life that I was normally capable of doing. Now, that wouldn't be a problem if it was just me who was reliant on me. You know, if I was just responsible for myself, it wouldn't matter so much. I, I'd just have to live with the consequences. I wouldn't have gone down the lines of thinking of getting a stick or at least as early on as I did. But um, the reason why I wanted to get a stick was because all of a sudden, when I fell and hurt my ankle, I couldn't look after my girlfriend properly. Because, of course, as I say, she was very dependent on, a, on an electric wheelchair for to have a mobility outside of the house um, and to get that wheelchair out. She needs someone like myself or, yeah, another member of family. But, you know, myself, I do 
most of the donkey work um um because i see her the most i suppose and you know i you know getting her wheelchair out of the house and stuff was something i couldn't do when my uncle was hurt and so i thought hang on a minute my pride my arrogance maybe my vanity anyway whatever it might have been i think it was vanity to start off with um, and my pride, definitely my pride, my man pride, you know, it, it'd be, it would be bruised by giving in to this, having to have a stick. I didn't want to give in to it. I didn't want to admit that I was uh, weak physically, you know. Yes, my mind had been scrambled by the, by the car, car crash with my amnesia and other things associated with that. Um, but I could kind of, I, I, you know, I, I, it was hard to cope with at the beginning, but I'd come to cope with that. But then all of a sudden I'm, I'm dealing with a diminished physicality, something where, okay, yes, I've got a paralyzed one, but I learned to cope with that as well. It, 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 but then another thing, and, and, and it just is like, I don't know if I can cope with the idea of having a walking stick because having a walking stick to me was giving in to this balance issue that I had. But as I say, it became, came to the point where basically when I injured myself, as I say, those two times that I just said, I can't let this happen again. People are dependent on me. I have responsible that I was what the responsibilities for other people beyond my own self. My health is important, not only to me, because of course I want to look after my own body, but also it's more so I, I want to look after those I love. And if I can't do it, then their lifestyle um, and their life experiences are diminished if and reduced if not completely removed whilst I heal from my fall and if I'd fallen badly you know uh, who knows you know I, I don't know if I'd be able to pick up the chair again if I broke my leg really badly or something so it's 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 something that obviously then became it, the light dawned on me so to speak and I accepted that I had to have a stick I think one of the reasons why I was so resistant to the idea to start off with was not just as I say, pride as such, but it was also fear because I had seen my grandfather uh, when he was still alive. Um, he had emphysema really bad and he had two walking sticks because he was so weak by the end. And I just remember the horrible color that they were to me. It, it, it didn't bother me obviously at the time, but all I had in my head was the, in the in, in, image in my head was these these grey and steel sort of walking sticks with the big rubber ends on at the end. And I just thought, I do not want to carry one of those around with me because it's going to make me feel like my grandfather. I'm going to feel, even if I'm not weak, I'm going to feel old. I'm going to feel vulnerable. And that stick is it's like a physical, you know, cross it's like my own cross to bear so to speak in that sense you know it would have become um worse than a scar you know um uh to me but then what happened was i started researching obviously when it became literally a necessary decision to get a stick um i started researching what sticks were available and i noticed actually there's some really fashionable sticks out there that you can carry around and people might not even think you got them as a walking aid that you might just be carrying them because well fashion you know uh and so i got a number of sticks actually which i will be i've done reviews on on, on a couple of them but i'll do a view of, across my whole range of because i started collecting them over the last few months i have started collecting them i've, I've kind of fallen in love with them in many ways because some of them are pieces of artwork um but um i have you know um a number of metal ones um uh, and i also have uh you know with skulls on on top you know which you hold um and uh you know i've got another one with snakes on it and stuff and then i have my the one that i now use on a you know pretty much th this is my go-to one now when i'm outside not inside because it's a bit too much to use inside but i have my old english gentleman's cane and i just love it i love it because even though that's 
old fashioned in many respects. Um, it's super modern at the same time. Uh, it's a Victorian design. I designed it myself and I got it through Cane Masters, by the way, in case any of you are interested where to get a, a stick like this. I bought it off Cane Masters online and it's handmade to the exact specifications that I asked of them. And it is wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful stick. Um, it may not be for you, but if it's not for you, trust me, go on eBay. That's your best place because they've got a whole range of different things on there where if you can find a good seller, uh, you can pick things up really cheap, you know, 30, 40 quid, and you can get yourself a really modern looking stick that's actually fully orthopedic in use uh, so it can bear body weight. Um, and there's some really, really good stuff out there. OK, um, but as I say, this is my go to one now. I absolutely love it. I adore it. <laughs> and it will be featuring in um, the series that I will be doing following this. That is how to defend yourself when you have a walking stick, because, of course, a walking stick, you can use it as a self-defense tool um, and that uh, using the martial art of Bartitsu. But I'll get onto that as I, sort of, as I say towards the end of the video. Um, but you know, so that got over that idea, that imagery that I had in my head of feeling old and all the rest of it. Um, the other barriers, of course, to having a walking stick, or the other issues have when you first start having a walking stick, is how you feel it makes other people think about you when you go out and about. Now, I had already had a year and a half of going outside with my girlfriend while she was in a wheelchair um, next to her and having people stare at her, okay? Um, people stare at people and you, you don't even realize you're doing it. I, I've done it obviously before the crash and, you know, I never meant anything wrong by it or anything like that. I was not even thinking anything, but you just sometimes you do stare and of course the worst thing the worst people out there for staring of course are kids and children they just stare because it may be the first time they've ever seen a wheelchair or in my case now a walking stick of certainly the design that i've got at least anyway um but luckily for me you know no no i wouldn't say luckily because of course it was the detriment of my girlfriend that led to it but but i didn't have to go through this on a personal stage or personal level so to speak um when people were staring at my girlfriend, I got angry with them almost. I never said anything or, or, or did anything, but I felt upset for her. And I felt like, why are you staring? Stop staring, you know? Um, but I went through that sort of pissed people staring at you phase with with my girlfriend, as, as I say. Um, but never did I have... Um, I, when when I started using my walking stick, I have had people stare at me, but it's never bothered me as a result of me having to deal with my girlfriend. Um, uh, however, though, it, it, it is definitely there. It, it's something you, you might have to deal with at first, but you, you quickly get used to that. I know what I mean, within normally 48 hours a week at most you might you're gonna you'll just get used to it you'll you're not even notice people looking at you and to be honest with a walking stick people don't really look at you anywhere near as much as obviously a wheelchair and things like this it's far less a stigmatization or or just something to you know that's not a stigmatization such but you know well you know what i mean it's not something as interesting as someone in a wheelchair for example and it's not going to catch people's eyes um as much the thing that you may have now, luckily, obviously, I'm in a very, um, you know, I'm in a, you know, a long term, very serious relationship uh, with my with my girlfriend, and we were in a relationship before the crash, and the crash only strengthened the bond of our relationship. Um, you know, we went through a death like experience together, and all we cared about was the 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 well-being of the other person all i could keep asking was how was she what, she, what you know when, as little as i could because i was heavily concussed and had severe amnesia you know in the first few few days after the crash um but you know, i knew that her leg was badly hurt and i kept saying is she paralyzed is she paralyzed is she okay he said what can i do can i want to i need to help i want to help you know all that and she was the same at her end she was she was badly badly hurt and she was like well, Where's Al? Where's Al? Is he okay? Is he is he still alive? Because she thought I died, you know. Um, at the time, she she you know when she first saw me, she was convinced I was dead. 
Um, but um, as I say, as a result of that, getting through that and being together through all the, the, the bad shit that life can throw at you has only convinced us that our relationship will continue forevermore. You know, we have been through the hardest, well, one of the hardest things that you can ever be asked to go through. And um, we did it with only the other person in our heart. You know, it showed us both that our love for one another was true. And we knew it anyway, you know. Um, and that's why, despite how hard life has been in the two years since the crash, we've we've all, all still been a bastion for one another. However, you know, you, if you, you've got a walking stick or require walking aid of any kind, you may not be obviously as lucky, uh, unfortunately. You may not have had a boyfriend or girlfriend before the your your own accident or illness that has caused you to to require a walking aid. Um, or maybe you did and they just couldn't cope with it. And they they left, um, in which case I, I honestly I feel I, I'm I'm very sorry for you, um, but at the same time you know if they can't take you for who you are with or without the walking stick or whatever then who, who or, or wheelchair or whatever who they were they're not they're not worthy of you okay um, I never left my girlfriend never went from my mind for a single second when I found out that she's going to have to be in a wheelchair it didn't. Didn't, didn't go from my mind because I loved her for who she was. Chair or no chair, she's still the same person, you know, doesn't matter, you know. So, um, and I think really that same approach comes to dating. If you're single and you're worried about dating and having a walking stick with you, yes, okay, it's going to, I think it's a bit easier on blokes, okay, because like with mine for example it can actually be almost part of your your you know you know your um your your clothes and and stuff you can make you look really smart especially if you i don't know if you're in a suit or whatever or if you're in a shirt or whatever and you've got a cane it can kind of go with it it really does it works nicely you look you look the business you know you can look sleek and they may not even realize that you've got that walking stick as a walking aid now what i would say is Definitely do not not take it with you. Take the walking stick or walking aid with you on your first date because you don't want it to be a, some, some kind of dirty secret because then you'll be tempted not to try and use it. And then when you get hurt, you, as in, and most likely, to be honest, you're probably dependent on it anyway. So you've got to take it with you. If, you, if you're fully dependent on it, you've got no choice. You've got to take it with you. But if you're a bit like me, where you, eh, you can get away with it and hope for the best that you don't get like that dizziness or, or, or you, that your legs don't give way or whatever, you know, don't take those risks. Take it with you so you can enjoy your night without worrying about falling over. And if they don't like you because you've got a walking stick, sling the hook. That's what I say. Who cares? Who cares? As I say, it might be a little bit harder for, for the women out there because, of course, blokes, they do tend to be a bit more superficial. They tend to look at looks first and then look at personality if they look at personality at all. But not all blokes are bad right uh, i hope i at least show you one example of someone who who never left their girlfriend when they went in a wheelchair for example a lot a lot of people do leave mass majority we were given the statistics by our lawyer you know for some reason they said oh well you got this chance of your relationship staying together well don't tell us that we don't care we're sticking together we don't care that you know mass majority of people do not end up surviving a car crash together you know re regards the relationship doesn't matter you know um and so i think the same would of course pro same approach would come to dating um with your girl or a boy with a walking stick as i say particularly if you're a girl if the, if the guy doesn't want to be with you because you've got a walking stick and they're they don't want to hold your hand or walk around with you uh, and they're a bit they're ashamed of walking next to you in public or something that's their problem not yours do not let it bring you down be strong say you're not good enough for me i don't want you because you know you they ultimately if you're looking for a relationship obviously it might affect if, you, if you're just going out there to have fun and that it might i don't know if it will affect your ability to have one night stands and that i've never been into myself so i can't can't comment but 
but it might yeah probably affect that kind of thing but typically if you're you know most people eventually when they're starting to settle down they're looking for relationships right and uh if you want a relationship you've got to love the person not not the outer image so to speak obviously you know it helps if you fancy your partner and you Trust me, they'll fancy you whether you got your stick or not because it just doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's a minor part of you, okay? Um, and so what I would say is with dating, get, it, may, it might make things a little bit harder, but don't let it worry you, okay? The third and final bit I'll say is about vulnerability. Does having a walking stick make you more vulnerable? Well, Whatever makes you have a walking stick makes you more vulnerable. For me, my lack of balance, you know, my unpredictable balance makes me more vulnerable because if I was, despite being, you know, a highly qualified martial artist and all the rest of it, um, and, you know, despite the fact that I'm training at the moment to try and fight professionally in MMA, um, mixed martial arts, um, it doesn't really despite all that i do feel that more vulnerable if i don't have my stick with me i think if i have to defend myself against someone who's trying to mug me you know take my wallet or try to stab me or whatever it's, it's quite common especially over here in england there are a lot of assaults and and, and muggings and robberies and stuff um it is it, something that you know <sighs> I have people have tried to move me in the past and they've failed because I've stopped them. And and now I think, well, if people try to move me now, would I be able to stop them? Yes, I've still got the same skills that I used to have, but what if my dizziness dizziness suddenly attacks during that period of time? Because it does tend to get worse or it gets provoked and it gets set off by stress. And that's a stressful environment being, you know, potentially threatened um like that well yeah that makes me feel more vulnerable to some extent but when i got my stick with me i don't feel more vulnerable because i know well if i do get dizzy but i can plant that into the ground it's only for a half a second and then i'm good again and what i would say is is that really as long as you've got your stick you're not that much more vulnerable if at all more vulnerable than you were beforehand unless of course you you really are very dependent on the, on it you know you have to put all your weight on it and if they were to take away your stick that you would be co- completely incapable of propping yourself up then yeah okay that, that's something to consider but but what i would say is when you've got the stick as long as when you've got the stick you can move around relatively normal it normally maybe a bit slower than you did before but you know you can walk around relatively normally then you are no more vulnerable than anyone else however the world will see you as more vulnerable those who want to prey on people who are vulnerable the muggers and things like that like i said well they see what do they who do they see as vulnerable they see young kids, young teenagers, easy easy prey because they can't, they haven't really learned how to handle themselves and you know and things like this. They see old people as being vulnerable. They see women typically as being vulnerable also sometimes. Um, you know, women on their own. Um, and on top of this, you've also got people who are disabled. They see them as being vulnerable. And if you've got a walking stick. In theory, you're, you're you're certainly handicapped and you know in some ways disabled, um, and so in their eyes at least you'll be disabled, and so they will think, oh, you're easy bait because if I grab your bag or wallet and I run, you're not going to be able to chase me down, um, which is probably true. But more importantly, you, the snatch jobs there's nothing really you can do about that, and there's nothing you would do about it before. But if they come up to you and they threaten you to say, "Give me your wallet," cause it's not like you normally holding your wallet out and say, "Please take my wallet, please." You know, you've got it concealed normally. Um, then obviously, one of the things you've got to consider is 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 that they might come up to you and try and threaten you because they think you're easy, 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 easy to. Uh, to, to threaten an easy prey, so to speak. Well, I hope you're not. I mean, obviously, most situations, I'd say, comply. You know, if they've got a knife, especially, you don't want to get stabbed. Fuck it. Give me your wallet, you know. But if you have to defend yourself, then, then defend yourself. And 
And what I'll be doing, guys, is if you do feel vulnerable in those situations, if you feel that you can't defend yourself properly because of your walking stick or because before you were you didn't really know much about martial arts and about fighting, about self-defense and stuff like that, then I am doing a martial arts series on the way of Bartitsu, um, my own adaptation and uh, interpretation of the martial art, which is a martial art that uses, as I say, a, a cane or walking stick as part of your self-defense. Essentially, it uses your, your walking stick, your walking aid, as a not as a weapon, um, but a self-defense implement is probably how I would describe it because you're not really using it to hurt the person. Most of the things is just keeping the person at a distance and if they've got a knife disarming them of the knife with with the stick but it's obviously there also because if they get a swift whack from a walking stick i tell you what then they're going to think twice about coming next year because it's going to hurt more than a punch <laughs> um, and of course it has the advantage of range it keeps your opponent at range which is very important when it comes to as i say people mugging you if they have a knife on them then a cane is far longer than a knife far 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 longer than a knife you know it's uh, so mine's 38 inches long you know anything over i mean if they've got a 12 inch blade then fuck me that's that's basically a mach it's cut, it's, you get into machete territory once you get over 12 inches so um and and saw territory you know so you probably only got a six inch blade on them and i've got a 38 inch cane so do the math right um, the advantage lies with you if you know how to use it correctly. And that's what I'm hoping to teach in the videos and my playlist. Well, learn alongside you, more importantly. Um, because, of course, it's a much lot that I have no knowledge of myself at the moment. But I will be picking up and sharing with you. Thank you, guys. Um, that's going to conclude this video. Thanks for listening if you got this far. And I'll see you soon.